Hi, I'm Tony Fleming, and this is Fleming's Ultimate Garage. Hey, Ray, welcome to today's video. Listen, man, in the world of muscle cars, you know, some are legendary. A Chevelle Super Sport, definitely a legendary car. Then throw on uh, the Yanko name to it, and you have what you call uh, cars that bring huge and ridiculous money, which then spawns the reproduction of those cars because those cars there, first off, are very expensive. Secondly, it's a little scary to drive them when you're driving around a $200,000 or $250,000 car uh, and something could happen on the street. In this case here, we have a beautiful restoration of a real super sports Chevelle with a 427, done just like Yanko would have done it, say in circa 1969, and this is great. So we just finished painting the whole car, detailed the undercarriage, we did the interior, uh, detailed the engine compartment. So as we look around this car, you'll see the effort that we put into it. And not only is it a great car, it sounds fabulous and it is ridiculously fast. So come on up here, I'd like to show you this real quick. Just the quality, This everybody can see something like that, but really what I want to see, I want you to be able to see like what time it is. These right here are the uh, Yanko Stripe kit that's on there. And if you didn't want that, that's really cool because these just peel off if you don't like them, okay? All new chrome, stainless, bumpers and trim. You got these kinds of things over here. Come on over and I'll show you what I'm talking about, okay? You got the 427 callouts. Couldn't get a factory 427 Chevelle. Yanko had to give it to you, all right? And in turn, what they did is they took a car that wasn't a super sport, just a car, all right? and then they did their stuff to it. And that's exactly what's happened right here in the sense that no Super Sport badge in the grill because they weren't selling a Super Sport, they were selling a Yanko, all right? And again, the Yanko gets the call outs right here and the stripe kit looks awesome on this car. The torque thrust like it's supposed to have, disc brakes like it's supposed to have, front and rear sway bars, because you're gonna want, first off, this car makes a lot of power, all right? You're talking about, uh, you know, seven liters or whatever it is that, that gets you to there. So carry the one, anyway, it's somewhere around seven liters, all right, of power. Probably 500 horsepower. We'll just say it's 200 horsepower, but it's closer to 500 horsepower, all right? Going through a four speed. As this car is rising and falling in between gears, right? Eventually, as you blow through the quarter mile traps or you're racing some guy on the street, not that I would ever recommend that, of course. But let's say it's some guy in a Subaru. A Subaru says, you know what, I got all-wheel drive, I got some turbos, I got some stuff going on. And you say, you know what, that's an interesting car you have and I can appreciate that, but there's no replacement for displacement. And what I got right here is, uh, Fleming told me, it's somewhere around seven liters carry the one with the math and stuff, whatever, it's just what he said. And you get on the gas and you roll this thing down the road and this thing is screaming down the road because that 427 is legendary for one reason, because it was bulletproof, it made enormous power, and, uh, and then you're gonna need these to stop it, which is a disc brake. So I spent a lot of time on disc brakes, but I just wanted you to get a feel of what it's like with the top down, tires screaming, uh, smoke billowing out of the wheel wells. I would never recommend that, but I have seen that on some other people's videos. That's all I can say to you, okay? All right, let's keep checking the car out. Torque thrust, nice big BFG radial TAs with white letters pulling all the stripes and everything together, okay? New bumpers. Check this out back here. I love this, man. The Yanko call out here and this little sneaky, sneaky little emblem. How you doing? How you doing? Uh-huh. Nobody there said, oh, that's all you got? It's a 427? No one has ever said that. You know why? Because it's a mammoth. And when we start it, you'll know exactly why. All right. Let's take a peek under the hood. It's the little detail stuff like new cowl vents and new wipers. And as we're finishing up this car, we have some seat trim that needs to be put on. We have a box of trim parts that are left. I wanted to get the video done. All that stuff will be done by the time you get the car, but it's the little stuff that takes weeks and weeks and weeks to do. We now have all the rest of this car. It took us six months to get it all done. And I think that you're gonna be really happy when you get it. And that's why I wanted to do the video. So I'm doing a little premature. Uh, you know, we replaced the, the headlight bezels, the grill, the bumper, the lenses. Uh, just all kinds of things in the car, and then there was uh, some stuff was on the back order, so I just wanted to tell you that. All right, so let's take a peek under the hood and see what we got. Ready? Let's take a peek under the hood. All right. Now, for me, uh, this is the kind of stuff that I like to see because this is how I build it, and I hope you like it as well. So you got a, the 427 with the uh, call outs on it for 425 horsepower. All right, that was a lot of power in these cars, man. Think about that. You could get a maximum of 375 horsepower. This is 50 additional horsepower and a lot of cubic inches. And the 396 at 375 was a pretty stressed out engine. This is very understressed and probably underrated. 
These cars easy make 500 horsepower, and uh, that's why they're so legendary. I buy the battery toppers to put on here. I do the wires. This one here, I typically do black wires, but I did the yellow wires because it was a performance edition. So I can swap those if you want black ones. And I replace all the hoses, the clamps, detail the wiper motor, hood insulation, black satin under here like it's supposed to be. It's just a cool car. You don't need all that stuff, right? But the cool thing is if you want to go to a car show or if you want to uh, uh, park it out in front of a restaurant, you know, and some guy says, wow, that's your car, man? Can I look under the hood? Because nobody ever says, don't show me what's under the hood. Don't show me, I don't even care. It, you, they care, I promise you. And you're gonna open the hood and go, wow. So come around here, I wanna show you some of the other little stuff. Correct exhaust manifolds on there, okay? Yanko tuned decals are on there. So I feel like we've done a fairly good job representing the brand and getting you a ridiculously cool car. And it doesn't come to cost you $250,000, which is even better. All right, let's take a peek in here. All right, so what I did was uh, I took the trunk mat out because I wanted you to see some of uh, what's going on in here. All right, so this is important and it's important to me because I wanted you to see it. Because this right here, see how the ribs, you can see everything in here, all right? This is a nicely done trunk pan. A lot of times you'll see this paint over an ugly trunk pan, meaning it's full of Bondo and rust and things like that. That's not the case here. This has all been uh, done properly. It's got new gaskets and weather stripping on the entire car because every time we paint a car, we put new window weather strips in, the window fuzzies, and a weather strip kit around the whole car. We also throw the decals on here, okay? A little couple air bubbles in there. That lets you know that they're fresh. We got a jack and spare in here. Now this is kind of cool, man. Come over here for a second. This is an original bias ply tire. Okay, check that thing out, man. It's just kind of a cool piece. And then the trunk mat will go in here, and we normally put a spare tire cover over top of it if you want. All right, these are new pads for the new convertible top that we had put on. They sent us two sets. I don't know why we still have the other set in there. You can have them if you want. Okay, all right. New tail light bezels, tail lights, call outs that we talked about. I know it sounds, you know, uh, like I keep talking about all the little stuff, but I'm just trying to explain to you the effort that goes in to getting all of this stuff done right? New carpet, uh, seat covers, uh, the new uh, trim for the seats has come in. We didn't get a chance to put that on yet. All right. And I think that uh, as you look around, uh, everything should be uh, to your liking. Okay. We'll check out the inside now. All right. So uh, I was holding off the video because I had ordered these really cool Yanko uh, floor mats. I still don't have them yet, but they're the mats and they have the Yanko emblem in them. They're supposed to be here. I'm sorry, uh, but I don't want to keep holding the video off. Everybody's been asking about it. Uh, so I needed to get it done, okay? Uh, nice gauges on the dash, power top, uh, four speed as we know, and I would like to go ahead and fire it up for you so you can just hear the sound uh, that this car makes. So as we close up this video, the last thing to do is drive this car because we've talked about all the detail stuff. The front suspension's all been taken off, detailed. The rear end's been all detailed. The engine, transmission, and rear were rebuilt along the way. Oh, part of the restoration. The paint is all brand new. The emblems, the bumpers, the trim, yada, yada. So much has been replaced that we still have a few things left to replace on the car. And uh, when you get it, that'll be done. So that should be done here just shortly. But I wanted you just to see this car, a convertible Yanko Chevelle. Mwah! Anyway, sorry, I get a little excited. Call us 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this. Find a way to get it in your life.